Hello everyone, this is Evan from The Trade Risk here on Friday, May 6th with a weekend market recap video. We are first going to analyze the current market environment. We're gonna look at some other markets, sector analysis, and then finish off with some individual names. Before we get into things, I want to ask everyone, if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, please do so, bottom right-hand corner. Uh, it just helps keep you up to date with all the new videos that we put out. It also helps extend our reach, get us noticed, and just lets me know that people are enjoying these videos. Uh, there is value out, you know, that I am providing value and people are happy with the videos. So if you haven't already, please do subscribe, bottom right hand corner. Um, keep these videos free. I just want to try and reach as many people as possible. And that's what helps me do that. So thank you for your support on that. And now let's jump into the action this week. Uh, we ended on Friday here up 37 basis points on the day. That's constructive, finally closing on the highs of a day. Um, that's good to know. But let's talk about where we came from from earlier this week. Let's go to a weekly chart first. You can see we closed down 30 basis points. So gave up a little bit of ground. And that was following up about a one and a half, 1.26 percent loss last week so this is the second week in the row that we've given up some ground but notice we do have the bulls trying to push us off these lows so there is some interest coming in here as we get down to around this 204 level now we've talked about this we've put out a few different blog posts on uh, on the trade risk you can view those this week discussing the importance of this 204 level that's exactly where we found support today remember this is the area where bulls stepped in buyers stepped in and supported this market going back through the first couple of weeks of of April. This is a very important level as we discussed because uh, there isn't a whole lot of, of prior support back underneath here. Once we lose 204, the market has some room to sort of trade lower here and that's what um, and that's why this level is, is a bit of a high stakes level right now um, for for the bulls. So we we did defend that today. That was off the heels of the unemployment report uh, data that was out this morning. Uh, we did initially, of course, gap lower, but you can see we just very cleanly kind of drove higher uh, throughout the majority of Friday's session. Now, are we out of the woods yet? My answer is no. Um, I, I think this was a constructive bounce. Uh, this definitely saved, uh, you know, put a lid on this sort of... Uh, grind lower that we were in just this kind of free fall even though it's it's been very choppy but we've been just kind of taking these 30 cent 50 cent 60 cent lower days um, ever since really uh, back here on last Thursday we've just been kind of moving slightly lower uh, and and today finally put a little bit of a short-term bottom here in the market uh, getting back above 205 was constructive recovering the lows here from Wednesday and Thursday that was constructive but notice the technical picture really didn't change too much after today we did rally to the highs I think that was the easy rally now it's going to get interesting to see if the bulls can really start to continue this. You have this downtrend line that's coming in and you have more importantly around 206 or so is a pretty important level. That's the highs from Thursday, Wednesday. There was also a lot of price action traded in here from last Friday and Tuesday of this week. Also notice this is where sort of um, the lid was kept on price back here in early April. So there is some significance to this around 206 level. You got that level. You got this trend line coming down. You got the 20 period and 8 period moving average which is now in bearish formation above price coming back down to sort of hammer on it. So you're certainly not out of the woods yet, but you do have uh, some hope right now that this area wants to hold. So I think there's a little bit of something for both. Um, you're probably going to get some more two-way choppy action in here. I wouldn't be surprised maybe if we make another push higher next week, but can we actually hold above 206? Can we actually get back above here, break this downtrend line? That's what's going to be interesting. That's what we need to see. For now, um, I still think it's a time to be cautious. I think you just need to pick your spots, know what sectors are performing and which aren't. We'll discuss that in just a little bit. Um, and I think you just need to uh, either keep things light or embrace the volatility depending on your strategy and time frame and really just sort of adjust accordingly. Uh, at this point, the levels clearly now are the lows from Friday around 204. If we lost this level, I do think we'd see some type of sharp knee-jerk reaction lower, some type of flush lower. That's a very important level. If you want to be long uh, at the close today versus the lows of Friday of, of today, I think that works too. I mean, whatever your strategy is and however you want to approach it, uh, I think just 204 or so is a very clear level to use. I'm using, like I just said, 206 or so, and then 207 is 
really, um, I know I'm spitting out a lot of numbers here, 207 is really though what I, I would say would get me a lot more neutral, get me off sort of my bearish bias right here, um, because we would of course now, if we could get back above 207, that means we would have gotten above 206, we would have reclaimed the 20, we would have broken the downtrend line, so that would at least put me in a more neutral standpoint if we can get back up here to this uh, above this 207 level. So that's those are the levels that I'll be paying attention to heading into next week. Um, and if we look at some of these other uh, major indices, the IWM 0.6% rally here um, on Friday. That's constructive. You can see didn't get all the way back down and retest the support down here at 108. This is sort of the equivalent in the spies. You can see a slightly higher low potentially getting put in here. But you do have that cross um, on just about to happen or in progress of happening today on the 8 and 20 EMA. You get this downtrend line that's in place here. So you still need more commitment by the bulls to say that, um, you know, that the pressure is, is sort of alleviated. However, you do see, again, uh, a, a red open and rally to green and and reclaiming Thursday's lows slight constructive action there let's see how things look heading into next week similar to the S&P 500 and then finally the Q's much of the same you can see almost put in this bullish engulfing bar um, a little more impressive you can see almost getting also back down to 104 which was a previous breakout level from January uh, I'm sorry from March um, which was also resistance in January notice we've retraced a bit more more of this rally from February all the way up to, to, to the mid-April mark. Uh, we've retraced probably more uh, around the 40% or so level from this entire leg. So this one's been beaten up the most, the Qs, uh, but you can see starting to look a little more constructive, arguably had the um, you know one of the better days out of all those indices today on Friday. So that's sort of the market outlook right there is a little bit of something for both. If you're bullish, if you're bearish, you got something to work with. You get to pick your sectors, pick your spots. Um, and I think the markets are certainly interesting here as we push through and finish the first week of May. Now, let's get into some other markets. TLT has been on the move higher. A little bit of a st uh, stutter step here on Friday inside day. However, uh, 8 and 20 EMA is starting to cross back up, heading to the top end of this range. Looks constructive there in TLT. USO, you can see... Uh, um, you know, just kind of battling it out. A lot of sideways, indecisive action up here, but it is holding above 1050 or so. This is the big line in the sand that I'd be using. If you're bullish in, on USO, I think you can be. If you lose 1050, that's when you'd get concerned. That would be some type of big false breakout here. You'd also lose some of these moving averages. So if you want to trade against 1050 on the bullish side, I think that works. I like it. UNG uh, still just kind of moving sideways, slogging it out in this range. My thoughts are still constructive here in UNG as it moves sideways and tries to base out. We haven't seen any real momentum uh, to the upside just yet, but um, I'm still keeping a close eye on it, holding above $7. I think that's the important level. Keep this one still on watch. Needs more time, uh, but I still like the potential here in UNG. Uh, gold had a nice move higher today, up 1%. You can see starting to break now this recent flag, this recent digestion here. We broke out above uh, 121. We went pull back to the eight period EMA, found some support, and now we're trying to move higher again. I like gold weekly chart. This is just, I mean, there's not much not to like here on this weekly chart. Massive impulse leg higher, some tight sideways consolidation, and now it looks like it's trying to go again. Silver weekly chart, you can see similar thing. We had three strong weeks of uh, momentum pushes higher. We're digesting some uh, this past week. We're still down here, not as quite as, as, as a powerful move here on Friday as we saw in gold, um, but it still looks good, still healthy above the eight period EMA. So a lot of strength still here um, in silver just the same and then finally UUP which is the US dollar you can see this did get a, basically a full a full week of, of trading higher you just had a little bit you had this gap lower on Monday and then that was pretty much it we, we had we, we came higher Tuesday Wednesday Thursday coming back to this 2450 level we talked about this in Wednesday's midweek video getting back above 2450 I think you have some signs of a major false breakdown if you can start to rally us back above 2450 again we haven't seen it yet but if the bulls could do that um, that'd be pretty constructive to get back inside this range otherwise I still think you need to be a little bit suspect here we had a nice little bounce higher coming into previous supply let's see how it acts heading into next week so let's now get into some of these sectors 
stand out this week, hands down, IYR, real estate sector on fire, up 98 basis points, 1% here on Friday. But look at this weekly chart, very, very impressive. Had a strong move here uh, from these February lows all the way up, and then it went six weeks, seven weeks of just going sideways, letting the eight period moving average catch up, and then we just launched higher this week. Very constructive, good looking action. Go to a monthly chart, you can see uh, almost like it even more. This reminds me very much of utilities um, back here when we played this for a breakout. Similar pattern, just the way all this looks. And I know these do trade very similar, but you can see IYR um, looks pretty actionable here on these longer term time frames. Long term trend followers are probably all over this. Uh, so IYR certainly a standout. Staples also a standout as well. Did pretty well this week getting back to these recent highs. Uh, and cyclical, uh, I'm sorry, the discretionary actually holding up pretty well too. You can see um, it's been moving sideways, a little bit messy in here, but you can see a pretty impressive day today, up 74 basis points. Arguably a bullish engulfing bar today uh, was put in here. So the discretionary uh, ETF here, XLY, looks pretty interesting. You want to zero down on some of those components in there to see what's standing out, what really helped that. I'm not sure what it was offhand. Uh, so those are uh, the top three to keep on watch. As far as the downside, the sectors to avoid or, or, or what got beat up at least this week, uh, energy found it pretty rough this week, came down, just really traded lower. Still, um, I mean, all things considered, it's battling out at the 20 period, healthy pullback, but let's see how it acts here. Uh, the material names got a little beat up as well, also coming back into this prior breakout level. It's an important area for XLB to hold, see how that acts next week. Financials still pretty weak. Um, again, all of these traded up here on Friday, but on, on the week, they were beaten up, and so is healthcare as well. You can see this one still was right on the day here on Friday, IBB. XLV, these type, these um, these two sectors here, you want to be careful of, um, and just see how they act now. Um, they've been, I mean, look at IBB. This is down almost, you know, this is almost down two 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 weeks straight in a row. So maybe you're due for some type of bounce here, but you still need to be careful. You're in a sideways range. Just realize the type of environment that you're in. Now let's uh, get into some of these individual names. Apple is at a very high stakes area. There's a lot of eyes on this name. This is going to be tricky. This is going to pull and 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 push back and forth here. Everybody knows $92 is important. Um, so you just expect a lot of um, you know uh, mischievous around this area and, and just give it some time to see which way it wants to go. Uh, $92, of course, very important. There's a lot of room and air underneath it. Um, and this is the pattern on the weekly chart. Very clean. Let's see how it acts heading into next week. Google finding some support down here around $700. Nice session here put in on Friday up 1.5%. Looks good trying to hold on to the 700 that's good win by the bulls right there facebook already trying to head back up made new all-time closing highs today very impressive here almost bought this on friday but decided to just lay off it just a little bit here uh fast moving averages catching up i like facebook i'm watching it closely almost bought it on friday but i'm passing on it for just now amazon similar situation not as ideal as facebook i think facebook looks a little better than this uh, mostly because 680 or so is still an important level Level. This was back in December or so. This is where price stalled out. Um, so we just want to see how it acts, if it can get back up around 680, take out that level, becomes a lot more interesting. Tesla really got hammered here for the past week or so. This had earnings this week, uh, but it did try and stabilize here on Friday. Was red, went green. Uh, let's see if it can hold on to 210. Still looks very vulnerable. Look at the fast moving averages way up here, hey, uh, racing lower. Uh, just needs more time. I wouldn't want to touch that one way or the other. GoPro had earnings. This one back to base. Basically, new all-time lows uh, closed near the highs of the session today, but still uh, pretty poor performance overall. Similar to Twitter, which we're going to look at next, uh, it needs to get back above 1560. This is Twitter. If we're talking about GoPro, as I skipped that in the middle of the sentence, uh, it needs to get back above 1130. But very similar patterns here that lost the lower end of their trading ranges, respectively. Now they need to reclaim them uh, before things get interesting. Uh, and I think that's about all I had to go through. Um, it is. So I hope everybody enjoyed the video. Again, uh, please do subscribe, bottom right hand corner, if you enjoy these videos. As always, thank you for watching, and I will catch you guys next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah.